Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to look at a few more examples of playing with channel selection. And in this example, what I want to show you is how a simple way of implementing something like a timeout. Let's say you want to call several functions to perform some work and how you can pick the one that finished the soonest or the fastest, right? So it might make sense, but something like this is pretty um, difficult or involved to do in uh, many other programming language. Um, even like Java, uh, but here in Go, we're going to see it's pretty easy. So let's take a look. So I'm going to get this out of the way. Um, I even quit that. And so here I'm in our chapter directory, and I'm going to make a copy of the work, the project we were working on in the previous section, and then I'm going to change to that directory, uh, seven, and then start up my code editor. Okay. And so, expand that, and get a nice big editor. If we click here, we'll see it, so this is exactly where we left off. So this is more channel selection. All right, so let's take this very simple example. Assume that um, I wanna write a search engine, right? So I'm gonna get a query, some query, a string basically, for something that I want from um, a user to search, right? So I'm getting from a user, and hey, I want you to search for something. So this is my query. Okay, I'm getting from a user, and maybe I get it over, um, I have a web server, and it's provided to me by the web, or I read it from a file, or whatever command line. So this is my query. And what I want to be able to do is pass that to my search function, and I want to pass this query to my search function. So this is the query string to my search function, and of course, my search function should do the search, perform the search, and return the results, right? Now, it, my results could be an array of strings, an array of some data type, you know, um, like a structure of something, a result, you can have a struct result and it return an array of that. But in this example, what, and of course, once I call this function to run the query, it's gonna take some time to do it, right? You know, maybe I have to go search to a database or whatever. So I'm just going to say that oh, this is going to return time that time, right? So it's going to return a channel on which I'm going to read the time, basically tell me how long this query took, okay? So um, let's make this now. So I can get rid of all this. I'm not going to close it or anything. I'm simply returning the time and so how long it took. So one way of doing that is to create, um, call the time that after method. And if we look at it, time that after, it takes a duration, but it returns immediately a channel on which you can read the time. And of course, if you're reading that channel, you're not going to get anything. You're going to be blocked waiting for the time to expire that you asked for, okay? So we played with this one before in the previous um, section. So I want to wait for some time. So I can say here, wait after 200 milliseconds, I want um, this time to expire. So of course, I return that, right? And here... I can just say, you know, select, um, try to read case, let's call it T um, is equals to um, read from this channel, this C, and then I could do FMT, that print line, um, search finish, Plus NV, and then I can do, well, how long did it take the search to complete? Well, if I do just, um, if I just put T here, this would be the time, um, as we know, when the search completed. But I want to see how long it took. So I'm going to say now is when I launch this query. Um, so time that now. I'm going to get that. And then if I want to get the difference between when the query finished and when it started, I'll say subtract now, okay? So if I do this, what I have now is before I submit my query, my, I call my search function, I get the current time, and then um, once I get the channel for which I can read back, you know, the delay, how long this query took, now I can do a difference. And so I'm gonna select and wait in there, and then I print it out. So let's see if this works. So I say go run main. And what I'm expecting is this to wait 200 milliseconds, right? So you see, there it is. It's about search completed after 
you know about 200 milliseconds so um, let's make this that and this 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 not that it really matters much but probably look a little bit nicer so there we go okay to start completed after 200 milliseconds which is what I've hard coded here but I don't want to hard code 200 milliseconds because I don't know that the search is always going to take 200 milliseconds it can vary so I want this to be a random number and if you remember we can use the ran we use that when we were playing with um, arrays and slices and so on to generate some numbers so we can do that here so let me see the random number generator by doing ran that so okay um, ran that seed that time that now so I get the time now and I'm gonna convert that time to um, because what I'm trying to do is if you look at my ran that seed method ran that seed and if I can get that to complete yep so that seed and if you look at it it expects an in six to four okay as a number to seed it with well how can we get a random number to seed it so it doesn't generate the same number if I use five here every time I run my program it's going to generate the same set of random numbers I don't want that so we went through this before so I'm going to do use time to get the current time now then I'll take the time now and convert it to a Unix time and as you can see that returns uh, in 64 so I can seed my random generator with the number representing the current time now which is whenever the program runs and then here instead of using um, 200 I can do time um, ran that int n and so if you pass in a number here you can tell it you know the range between where you want um, the limits essentially so let's do about 400 um, about 2000 so we're gonna say generate a number between essentially 0 and 2000 you see um, n greater than equals to 2000 right oh not that here um, between 0 and um, less than 2000 so basically 199 1999 sorry right so 1999 so between 0 1999 so I'm gonna generate that but this is just a number um, an integer number times this millisecond so it's telling me how I can do that so I'm going to do time that I'm gonna cast this to a duration the so time that duration I'm gonna cast this number that I get from my random number generator and time it by milliseconds okay and then I return it so let's run this and see now and every time we run it we should see that how this is going to wait a random number between up to 200 um, to two, mil two seconds right so that's 2000 milliseconds is two seconds so that's working nicely okay so my search taken um, different amount of time depending on when I call it so that's it a little bit interesting but what I want to do is if I know I'm going to um, run a write a search engine I want to have several ways of searching and so maybe I want to distribute it to different computers so let's imagine that I've implemented let's just call it three search engines different ways of searching or maybe three computers I have where you can perform the search and so some computers might be more busy than others and so we're gonna say that oh, this search goes out to computer zero this goes out to computer one and then this goes out to computer two right I send the same search and of course um, I have to you know store the times or the results we're gonna think of it let's say let's call this result from search zero result from search one and result from search two okay now because I don't actually have a different computer or a different way of implementing my search in this example and I know that every single time I call the same function it's going to be return take different times well that's is sufficient I really don't actually have to have different functions but as an example if in a real world you would implement different function going out to different computers or whatever right or different ways of doing this the, the work and so now to distribute the work right so we know here with this search function because of the fact that it's using random each call of it is going to take different time right so I don't really need to have different functions and so now I can wait on my different results okay 
So I've distributed the results, the, the search, the work, and now all I have to do is, um, okay, come on, there we go. Search one, results two, okay? So now I select on these three, and of course it's gonna be block waiting for which one is gonna be ready first. And the one that's ready first, is going to you know come back so we can say that search zero um, completed after this time, search one completed after this time, and search two completed after that time. Okay, so which one completes first is the one that is going to pick, which is exactly what we want. We want to distribute this, the query, the search request, and which one come back first? We pick that one and return the result to the user. So when I run now, I can see search one finished first there, search two finished first there, search two again, search one, blah, 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 all right? And you can see, you never know how long you have to wait, right? But what if I wanted to have a hard timeout? What if I wanted to say, you know, after 200 milliseconds, I'm gonna consider, if I don't have a result after 200 milliseconds, I'm gonna consider that late, okay? So in that case, um, we can say, you know, timeout is equals to time that after, 200 times time that millisecond. So I'm gonna create a, a timeout for 200 milliseconds. I'm gonna put that air in my selection also because that is something I want to, to be considered. So I'm gonna try and read from that too. My, well, I know when this um, expire um, that um, it's 200 milliseconds. So I don't really need to save this. So I can say, Search timed out after 200 milliseconds. Okay, something like that. So now I can not only distribute my search, but I also have a timeout. And so it's which one that's finished first. If these searches take too long, well then, um, even the one that's the fastest is not um, less than 200 milliseconds, well, I'll time up, I'll just give up. And so here you can see that, yep, I actually timed out. Um, let's put a new line there. And so, uh, timed out again. Search two happened to complete under 200 milliseconds. And so, you can see 180 milliseconds, blah, blah, blah. Right? So if my, one of my searches come back before 200 milliseconds, well, I return that, but if not, uh, too bad. Um, searching is taking too long, okay? I'm getting a lot of time out. Um, but if you keep running this, um, you'll see, okay? Um, it's eventually um, like there, okay? And maybe um, what we're given here, 2,000, um, you know, two seconds, maybe we should make this more like one or 500 to give our search functions a little fighting chance. <laughs> um, so now we, we, our search functions are coming in more often um, on time, okay? But you still can, if you keep running this enough, you're still gonna get some too slow, and we had one there just now, okay? So I hope uh, this was yet another example of how nice and um, efficient and what kind of code you can write um, with channels and um, channel selection, being able to write channel selection. And the standard library in Go using the, this time package, how it makes just being able to do some really, um, what would be difficult things in other language, fairly easy to, um, to demonstrate in this language and even implement. All right, so thanks, take care, try this out, um, post questions if you have them, um, see you in the next video. All right, All right. take care, bye.